here are some thoughts of mine on uh, constructive self-disclosure. Uh, let me first um, emphasize that when you establish proper trust between two people or two entities, the relationship becomes rich uh, and it is likely that the relationship will last fruitfully for a long time. So trust is, if you like, the foundation uh, of relationships. Uh, whether it be with uh, a client, with a, a company, with the community, with uh, your spouse, your brother, your parents, whoever, uh, trust is uh, the cement that really, you know, holds relationships together uh, and makes the relationship healthy. Uh, Self-disclosure is one form of building trust. Saying, hey, this is who I am. This is what I am. Uh, I've got no other agenda. Clarifying that right up front. So uh, let me first give you an example of uh, self-disclosure in the um, corporate area, that is in the, in the work area. When I set up my company, the Center for Creative Thinking in 1995, you know, I'm a great, I'm a student of Peter Drucker. I'm a really devoted student of Peter Drucker, uh, as I probably, uh, um, I've read probably almost 80% of what Peter has written. One of the things I um, told myself, um, even when I was an employee, was why aren't my bosses practicing Drucker's principles? Uh, and I struggled with it because when I would practice it, uh, they would not necessarily be very happy with it. I, only, I had only bosses for a very short period of time in my 20 years as an employee, uh, bosses who, you know, who Peter Drucker would have been proud of. So I, when I started my business, I was very clear that the things I should not do uh, as a manager, as a leader, uh, or, or the owner of a company. Uh, because I had seen um, all the horrible things that people did when they were in positions of power. So I practiced self-disclosure. I didn't know the term self-disclosure in, uh, in, in, in those words, but what I did was to practice it maybe unconsciously, but it, I was determined in my mind that I was going to do it. I was conscious of that. I was unconscious of the term self-disclosure. From, the, from my first employee to the very last employee I hired, I would sit up with them and explain to them why I set up CCT. And that's there on my website. I set up CCT because I was in a consultancy. I was working as a consulting manager and I was not too pleased with the way in which we were serving clients. We were holding back more things than we were giving. Uh, always with the idea of, you know, what more billing can I do? Uh, and the measure was really billing um, uh, and then trying to make the customer look happy, uh, at least in the short term. I don't think there was any effort really to make the customer happy on the, in the long term. And this is something that really, you know, worried me. And therefore, you know, I was, I was concerned uh, that uh, we were not giving our clients their due. And that's the reason why uh, I set up my business. That's one. I said I want to do it my way. I think my way is a, 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 a it will provide the happiness and success. Uh, you know, profits and purpose. Um, and that was my belief. Again, you know, I'm heavily influenced by Fred Smith, uh, the founder of FedEx, who you know, the whole idea was the three P philosophy: people, purpose, profits. Uh, you know, you hire the right people, tell them what the purpose is, and then they will produce the profits. Uh, so every time an employee would be uh, hired, I would sit with them and sit with that employee and explain to them that the company's job, uh, the, the, their role really was to satisfy the customer. And the customer was, you know, we treated as almost always right. Uh, you know, unless the customer, you know, did something unethical uh, or did something that's personal to you, which was not appropriate. Otherwise, 
everything else was, you know, the customer was right. Uh, and for us to find ways to satisfy that customer uh, and said, you know, I said, I would rather, you know, we be honest and upfront and say, look, uh, this is what it is, rather than try to hide it. And, you know, um, uh, like, you know, the stake under the carpet, uh, we found out a little later. Uh, th this is something that I was quite, uh, you know, firm about. I said, my reputation, I had already been writing, you know, a, a weekly column in the local newspapers, and they were, you know, they were, I had several thousand readers of my newspaper, and they knew that I, I know I took a very ethical stand and I was, you know, they understood my values through my articles and many of them then became my customers. So I did not want to lose it because to lose your reputation, it only takes one mistake and a few seconds. To build the reputation, it had taken me years. So this is something I shared with my employees, right? The front said that if you, if you do something wrong, uh, you know, admit it. If you don't know, you know, how to handle a situation, you know, it's all right. It's better to say, I don't know, I'll find out rather than to stumble through, appear as if you know it, you know, just fake it till you make it as something I do not believe in. Maybe many people believe in it. I don't think you can fake it till you make it and remain, uh, you know, happy and, and that, that, that success can be lasting. So I'd rather not fake it and not make it. So one self-disclosure was that. Uh, and, and I would also tell them, look, you know, if you have something to tell me about, you know, that you think I should know, this is the moment, let me know. So I would also encourage them to partly engage in self-disclosure, but by you know, engaging in self-disclosure myself first. I also tell them that you will be, you know, you will, you will be able to see the books of the business every quarter. You'll be able to see the books of the business as nothing is hidden from you. So, you know, there's complete transparency. That was the other self-disclosure I made. I said that this business is as much yours as it is mine. And therefore you must know how healthy the company is, how whether we are making profits or not making profit, how much profit we're making. You have a right to know it. And therefore, you know, you will know it. Now, having known it, you know, you have to keep it to yourself. Now you have to be, you know, ethical enough to keep it to yourself and try and see how you can maintain, uh, you know, how you can improve the business. So that was one form of self-disclosure. The other corporate self-disclosure we did was after the first two or three years of uh, running the business, we had a good, good bunch of clients. You know, we had, you know, we, we had collected very good clients. You can see the names on my website. Uh, there's, you know, some of the, the most storied clients uh, from the Fortune 500 as well. Uh, we decided, you know, how do we get closer to our customers? You know, how do we really cement our bond with the customer? So we came up with this idea. We did some brainstorming and we came up with this idea jointly of what is known as the care and share evening. So what we would do was, you know, we would, we would, we would select a particular uh, geography uh, where we had, you know, ample clients uh, at that time. And, you know, set up just before, you know, uh, just before Christmas, about, you know, three weeks before Christmas, we would have an evening where we would invite all our clients. And uh, we would invite all our clients. And normally, you know, uh, you're talking about 15 to 20 clients we would invite. Uh, at least 10 to 12 of them would uh, would, would, would be there. Um, uh, and that we thought, you know, we, we had a good hit rate. And what we did, the, the, the format of the evening was, first of all, for me to welcome, uh, uh, um, welcome my clients uh, and also welcome my colleagues. And then to ask my clients to feel free to stand up, go to the, take the mic and speak and talk about their experiences working with us. They say, you know, this is not pre-planned. Uh, you know, you feel free to say whatever you would like to say. Of course, this was already given to the client. The client was told that that evening, you know, we will we will offer you the opportunity to speak about us, uh, and you know, feel free to uh, you know take five or six minutes uh, to talk about your experience working with us. So we are all we, we are told them, you know, you, while giving them the invitation. Uh, were sharing them, they invite, uh, inviting them to join us. And out of these 
you know, 10 or 12 clients out of 15 or 20 who would attend it. It is always 12 to, you know, uh, uh, 10 or 12 who would attend. Uh, you know, we would at random, whoever would like to come and speak first. If there's no compulsion, there was no coercion. Uh, and we did not have any order that, you know, the client who, uh, you know, to whom we sold $2 billion should come first. Anything else, anybody, you're welcome. And they were invited to come and speak. And we were quite amazed that they spoke mostly, they spoke highly of us. They, they did not uh, speak ill of us. They really spoke highly of us. Uh, and they made us feel, you know, how good we were. Uh, yeah, there were times we failed and, you know, we said, you know, please talk about our failures as well. It doesn't matter. Uh, but they were very nice to us. They would mention, uh, you know, this didn't go too well, but, you know, Sam and his team set it right, or they are setting it right as we speak. Uh, it was always positive. The, also, the thing is that other clients got to listen, you know, clients who had just become clients recently, they got to listen uh, to clients who had been clients ever since we started the business, which was three years ago, and they got the confidence that, you know, we were really there for the long term, we were there to really help them. I, I, it was a completely open thing, and they, you know, our clients were sh quite taken aback that we were willing, you know, we were giving them a platform to speak about us in front of other clients. There's something most companies, you know, are very, very unwilling to do. But we said, there's no problem. Go ahead. So this is another, the third example of self-disclosure uh, I want to share with you is when, you know, FedEx was a client of ours. And uh, we had done some fascinating work with FedEx. I think some of it was even, you know, uh, published in the press. Uh, so one day we got a call from uh, UPS, uh, the, CA, you know, the, the, the the regional head of UPS. And he, he came to us and said, Sam, you know, um, I would like to explore possibilities of working with you. So I told him his name was John Tansy from New Zealand. I said, John, um, um, thank you very much. I'm really honored that you, uh, you know, you, you, you approached us and you want to work with us. But I, I hope you know that we work with FedEx uh, who are a direct competitor of yours. Uh, and I said, uh, full self-disclosure, uh, we must send you up front that we work closely with FedEx. Uh, two things, A, you may not want us to work with you because we work with FedEx. B, um, you know, even if you do want to work with us, we would like to take uh, the permission of FedEx. We'd like to go back to uh, FedEx and ask them if, tell them that, you know, you have um, approached us and would they be comfortable with our working with you? And John was very pleased with this approach. He said, Sam, I know you guys work for FedEx and that's the reason why I'm, you know, I, I want to talk to you, uh, but it's really honorable of you to say that you will first ask FedEx. So we asked, you know, I went back to FedEx and asked the FedEx CEO, listen, uh, we've been invited by um, the UPS uh, to help them out. I know that, you know, we work very intimately with you um, uh, and we thought we should let you know, we have not accepted any uh, work with them, but we thought we should let you know that we have been approached by, um, uh, by uh, UPS. And we completely agree that, you know, if you're not comfortable with our working with UPS, we will, you know, gently decline, uh, um, them, but we should, you know, we want to know your views. And the CEO of uh, you know, FedEx was at that time, uh, for the region, a gentleman called Hamdi Osman. Uh, Hamdi said, Sam, uh, I really appreciate your honesty and your openness. Um, and you are fully you know, free to go and work with uh, UPS. We don't hold, you know, you're not an employee of ours. You can't say you must only work with us, but we will, we will expect that you will have the professional integrity, not for you or your colleagues to share anything about FedEx that we do here uh, with uh, um, uh, UPS. Anything that's in the public domain, there's no problem. And you know, there's a uh, there's a great book on uh, on FedEx called I think Just on Time, uh, which anybody can read. Uh, and there, there are lots of you know facts about FedEx available. Um, uh, so uh, I said, you know, I'm the uh, there's already a book about FedEx available, not one but more than one, and uh, uh, that is something I cannot stop. 
uh, our uh, UPS from uh, gathering, but I can assure you that whatever goes on within the four walls of these offices or between you and us, we, they will never come to know about it. And there's no question what we do with UPS, we will not be willing to ever talk to you about it. And uh, that's how we started working with UPS. So this was another example of self-disclosure. So self-disclosure works, you know, and, uh, you know, the, the, the book calls it, you know, constructive self-disclosure. I'm saying honest self-disclosure, you know, and dis self disclosure that is relevant, you know, what is relevant to the, uh, um, uh, to the business at hand. That is the kind of disclosure you should have. And lastly, you know, I want to very briefly share with you uh, self-disclosure on the personal front. Um, you know, I fell in love with my wife when I was 19 and she was 14. So we were really kids. I, know I was just entering engineering college. Uh, and th that's when we fell in love. And uh, I, you know, I, um, I was, I, I, I had no money that time. I was studying on a scholarship. Uh, my, uh, uh, you know, my, my father wanted me to be a doctor and not an engineer. So he said he wouldn't fund my engineering education. Uh, so I was pretty much on my own. I, I had no money with me. Um, I'm, you know, I used to wear. Uh, shirts that with frayed collars. Uh, I only wore slippers. I did. I couldn't afford shoes. Um, um, so I told my, uh, you know, my uh, the lady, the girl I fell in love with. I told her, look, I love. I know. I really, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I, I'm. I, I want to marry you one day. But I must. I must tell you, uh, I have no financial backing. None at all. I have no money in my pocket. Uh, you know, my, my pockets are empty. Uh, and, you know, but um, um, I, I will do everything I can to succeed in life and keep you happy. But, you know, my, my, there might not be much support from my family. Uh, and I said, I told her this up front. You know, I said, you know, I'm studying on a scholarship. My father doesn't uh, want to educate me because my brother is already an engineer. He says, I, therefore, I should therefore become a doctor. And I can't stand the sight of blood. So I cannot take up medicine as a career. I'm sorry, I'm disappointing my father. But, you know, I, I cannot be a, a, a doctor who cannot see you know, the sight of blood. I would, you know, I would destroy uh, the lives of others. You know, I, I, would, I would be probably, you know, helping my patients fall ill and die soon. So, um, uh, and I told her this right up front, you know, I said, you know, I, I live on a shoestring budget and we get a scholarship. Uh, and sometimes some relatives, I had my mother's brother who helped me a lot, my uncle. I said, it's my maternal uncle who, you know, he, he gives me money whenever he knows I'm in need. But, the, uh, and she, she appreciated that. And that self-disclosure really helped because We've been married, by the way, we've been married 49 years now. Uh, um, I'm, I'm the same lady, you know. So uh, self-disclosure on the personal front also worked, you know. So um, uh, I felt it was important for uh, my, uh, you know, the person I love to know uh, my, my financial situation, what my really my financial situation was, uh, and to be honest about it <clears throat> so that she had no uh, misgivings. You know, the thing that often goes wrong with the relationship is say, but you told me this, but I thought this. And I, you know, if we can minimize that, perhaps relationships can be better. So that's the power of self-disclosure. And I hope, you know, it gives you the perspective of, you know, why self-disclosure is important and how it can, you know, it can be a real uh, additive uh, to success. And more important than success is happiness, peace of mind. Uh, that's you know you cannot buy peace of mind uh, in a store. You cannot give five dollars and say give me you know five ounces of uh, happiness. Uh, you know you have to you have to really it has to come from within. Uh, nobody can sell it to you. So um, uh, keep that in mind, uh, and I hope it gives you some directions on self disclosure in your own lives.